Hey, George here. Today I just want to talk about a setting on the Fujifilm X-T5 and the X-T4 that you might be aware of, but you might not be using correctly, just like I wasn't really using it correctly. Now this is gonna be more applicable if you're a photography first user and dabble in some video. Now, if you're a videographer, this might not be something that you might be interested in um, because maybe you already know about it, but if you're photography first and you dabble in video and you're just kind of learning about it, um, this might be something that's interesting to you. And, and basically what that is, is the movie optimized control setting on a camera. Now, the reason why I'm bringing this up is because the way I was originally going back and forth between shooting photos and shooting video was that, you know, I use my camera, I use the dials, um, and I might have, for example, when I'm shooting stills is, you know, I have my shutter speed set to something, let's say for example, you know, one over 125 or one over, you know, 250 or, or whatever it is. And I got my aperture all set, you know, maybe it's, you know, F4, F5.6 or, or whatever. But when I suddenly see something I want to shoot a video of, well, I switch it over to movie mode. And then I have to go and set the video settings, right? So because I shoot at 30 frames per second using the 180 degree rule, which basically just means you should set your shutter speed to be double your frame rate. So shooting 30 frames per second means that I would then go and move this over to one over 60. Now I used to shoot 24 frames per second. And when I was doing that, I would move it to 60 and then manually move this down to 48. Now the annoying part is that, okay, I'm done shooting my video and I go back to stills mode. Well, then I kind of reset everything to what I want for, for photos. And then again, I go back to video mode or, or movie mode. And I, again, go and reset everything manually again. And anyways, it's, you know, it's not that big of a deal, but just kind of doing it, you know, going back and forth, like resetting everything every single time. It was just getting a little bit tedious and it just felt like a bunch of friction. And the thing is I knew about movie optimized control, but the way it was presented to me and the kind of the way I, I learned about it, you know, by watching other YouTube videos too, is that at least my impression of it was that it was more for, you know, controlling those settings on the touch screen, right? So that when you're shooting video, you can adjust settings and you're not making noise by, you know, clicking things around on the dials, uh, especially you've got, you know, external mics and things like that. Um, at least that was my impression of it, right? I, even the Fujifilm stock invitation, you know, talks about, about, you know, stuff like that. And I've also seen other places where they're like, oh, you know, it's, it's for be able to control the settings, uh, you know, and be more silent uh, when you're shooting video. So because I actually don't really use the touch screen uh, when I shoot photos, I actually disable my touch screen on my LCD. So to me, that was never a setting that I felt like I needed to use. However, once I dived into it, once I actually used it, I, I discovered that the benefit of using movie optimized control is that it remembers your video settings. Okay, so let's say for example, uh, I have movie optimized control enabled and I go ahead and set, let's say I shoot, let's say I shoot 24 frames per second and I set my shutter speed manually to one over 48. And let's say I set the aperture also to like F 2.8, okay? If those are my video settings, and those are the video settings, let's say I want to always use, I just go ahead and set that when I'm in movie mode. When I go to stills mode, it would just use whatever settings I have on the dials, right? So let's say for example, I have my shutter speed to one over 250 as an example. And maybe I have my aperture set to f5.6. If I immediately switch this to movie mode, it would just ignore everything here. It would ignore all the physical controls. It would just automatically be uh, with a shutter speed of one over 48, uh, assuming you're shooting 24 frames per second. And the aperture would just be automatically f2.8. Okay, it doesn't matter what you actually have set here. It would just, the video settings, the movie settings, 
would just be set to what you had previously left on there. And I don't know, to me that it kind of opened something in my mind about this, right? I was like, oh, if I, if I do it that way, every time I go from stills to movie mode, it will always just be at the settings I wanted, it, right? For, for video, because the video settings, you don't really change that often, but just having that ability to just save the video settings for movie mode and then moving over to stills mode, I can just, it would just be whatever I set here. That kind of blew my mind a little bit. You know, I, I don't know if that, that sounds, maybe sounds a little bit ridiculous, but I was just like, oh, that just means that these controls are my photography controls, right? And when I switch to movie mode, it's just whatever settings I had previously set, whatever I wanted, right? One over 48 or one over 60 if I shoot at 30 frames per second. I don't know, it just kind of blew my mind. Um, and it made this camera like truly more of a hybrid camera for me, right? Because I don't have to go through the friction of setting everything manually every single time. It's just, I flip the switch and it's already, it's already set. Um, now, maybe this was something that was obvious to you. I don't know, but for me, it wasn't obvious. And once I learned that, it just opened my mind to how easy it is to use this camera as a hybrid camera. So anyway, I just want to kind of quickly talk about that uh, just because this is something that I learned and perhaps you didn't know about this either. Um, so I hope that was useful. I hope that was interesting. And if you liked it, I, you know, I would appreciate you liking and subscribing this video and uh you know i'll see you next time all right take care bye, -bye.